love that timeout. There's Bernhardt, he scores again. Indomitable, invincible. A one-man wrecking crew this season. How did Maryland lose the best player in the country and get even better? When 2021 Tewarton Award winner Jared Bernhardt left the lacrosse world to pursue a future on the football field, many believed Maryland would take a step back. What we witnessed instead in 2022 was the evolution of a Terrapin offense that may go down as the greatest of all time. Heading into championship weekend, the Terrapins are not just undefeated, they're beating teams by more than 9 goals per game and lead the nation in almost every offensive category. So how did the Terps get this good after losing Bernhardt? Deemer Class attributes the success to three major factors, positionless lacrosse, unselfish attitudes, and perhaps most importantly, the rise of Logan Wisnowskis. I think Jared Bernhardt is one of those generational type of talent players that we've seen in lacrosse. Now to come back the next year, and for Maryland to have an even better offense. You know, when losing a player like that, I think it really speaks to what Maryland has built and the players that they have. Let's start with the term positionless lacrosse. It's an emerging concept and Maryland offensive coordinator Bobby Benson is employing it to a T. But what does it really mean? In order to grasp the concept, you have to go to class. Positionless offense is all about guys being able to be fluid and play in different spots. It creates a lot of mismatches. It creates a lot of flexibility for the coaching staff to be able to initiate in different spots. Typically in lacrosse, you've had your downhill dodging midfielders, your ex attackmen, your shooters and things like that. More and more, we're seeing attackmen being being converted to midi and guys coming out of the box and then inverting and a typical attackman playing below goal line coming up to play in wing offenses and in pair sets and play above the cage. Here's an example from the Big Ten semifinals against Hopkins where Maryland utilizes some of those tenets to create an opportunity for their best offensive player to go one-on-one -on -one against a short stick. This is a great example of how Maryland spaces well and how well they move the ball. Kyle Long initially from his classic high wing spot. There's really no hedge generated from it, but what DeMeo does really well is move in space off ball. He finds that skip lane, so then Long ends up firing the skip through to DeMeo, and because of the initial off ball action, Hopkins gets a little messed up in terms of their recovery. Wisnowskis is now, instead of having to initiate against the top hole, he's splitting and loading at 10 yards against the short stick. Wisnowskis has been making plays like this within the framework of Maryland's offense all season. So far, he's scored 55 goals and registered 40 assists this year. As a result, he's broken Maryland's all-time career points record, become a favorite to win the Tewarton Award, and gone number one overall in the PLL draft. Wisnowskis, when he first got to Maryland, his calling card has always been his ability to score from the lefty wing, primarily off of a catch and also rushed approaches. His dodging ability has continued to evolve. His ability to distribute has continued to evolve. He's got the size, he's got the stick work, he's got the IQ, and that's what's made him so complete. Through this evolution, Wisnowskis has made a case for himself as Maryland's most positionless player. No matter where he is on the field, he always finds a way to manipulate manipulate matchups and take advantage of what the defense is giving him and his teammates. I think what also makes Wisnowskis really dangerous, he has a great balance of inside outside to his game. You can see here, he quickly reestablishes himself in the skip lane to get out the backside because of his ability to be a step down shooter. That ability then sets him up to be able to catch an attacker rushed approach. He dodges a pull, they have to slide and support to the pull as he rolls back to his strong hand. And then he has the wherewithal and the presence to continue to drag that out and then keep looking. He has the forward and he's able to also look inside and find the cutting con as the defense recovers. In addition to his inside-outside versatility, Wisnowskis is an elite player off the ball. Whether he's directing traffic on the crease or timing the perfect cut, the fifth-year standout is always in the right place at the right time. 
Let's flash back to that Hopkins game for an example of his off-ball creativity. I think this jump cut here by Wisnowskis really speaks to his savviness and his ability to score goals in different ways. Comes back to join in the big little, catches his defender on the backside of the crease and just gets a little slip cut and finishes right up field. Just having that savviness to kind of play in the gray area I think is really impressive. In the NCAA tournament, Wisnowskis has continued to operate with a veteran savviness. Watch this moment from Maryland's round one win over Vermont, where he subtly creates the matchup he wants with a quick switch at X. What I want you to take a look at here is how Wisnowskis actually starts in the crease, but you see that Wisnowskis and Molliver actually exchange. It causes a little bit of confusion from the Vermont defenders of who's hedging to the DeMaio dodge and who's gonna be ready to approach the ball at X. And so that now allows Wisnowskis to take advantage of a hang up situation. The goalie tries to flush him out and then he uses his strength and size to just attack the goalie right away. Get wide outside the goal, goalie can't recover. He's now basically shooting on an open goal as he gets up the hash. Wisnowskis is not the same do-it-all playmaker Bernhardt was for Maryland, but his intangible traits have made all the players around him better this season. Sometimes it's Jonathan Donville who steps up. Other times, it's Keegan Kahn. But in the quarterfinals against Virginia, it was Anthony DeMeo who helped get the party started with a first quarter hat trick. Here, with a little help from Kyle Long, DeMeo nets his third goal of the game. So this is something that I also really want to highlight of what makes Kyle Long a special offensive player. Because he has the speed, it would be very easy for him to always use his speed when he dodges. He does a nice job here setting up the pick down and splitting underneath and then rolling back to the middle, gives him more room to sweep across the top. But when he comes off of that pick, he also slows down, assesses the defense and uses a change of speed. Long does a nice job in general right here of not over carrying, gets it out forward quickly, and then demise is able to catch and shoot. There's no simple solution when it comes to defending this Maryland offense. Utilizing a zone defense isn't very effective, as Virginia learned early in this matchup, as the Terps always have six zone busters flowing through their amoeba-like offense. And one of the worst things you can do as an opposing defense is allow Maryland to shop from behind the net in a hang-up situation. Here's one such example from the Vermont game, where an array of clever cutting leads to an easy goal. What I think on a very basic level, these guys do really well in these hang up situations is they cut and flash to the ball. And then one of two options, they can just back up and kind of back pedal. And it really becomes essentially a moving screen or they can turn and then go find a body to pick and slip. And then eventually you can see Chorus does a great job of cutting right off of Maliver, who's backing up into that defender. The defender's not ready to switch and then great catch and twist or finish. As doomed as a defense may be in a hang-up situation, good luck chasing the Terps around the net and settled six on six. This sequence from the Big Ten Championship game against Rutgers shows, even when you think you have them stopped, Maryland's offensive machine just keeps on chugging. Khan does a great job of drawing a slide on the initial dodge from X. They swing it up and over right into a Donville dodge. And then notice again, as it gets started, Maryland does a great job of using small advantages to create bigger advantages. So as Donville catches and attacks back top side, he catches Demaya's defender hedging, who then is able to kind of catch, get a little bit of a hitch move. And then Demaya does a great job of continuing his dodge to now draw Wisnowskis' defender from X to hedge. He gets out with his feet, throws it forward and then to finish it off Murphy does a great job of then fading again for the third time to get to that skip lane Wisnowskis floats it right over the top four defenders for Rutgers are now rushing to the shooter and that leaves Khan wide open on the crease to clean up the garbage sometimes when you're just getting a lot of good looks and putting a lot of pressure on the defense the ball just tends to bounce your way as you get the defense spinning between the evolution of Wisnowskis the selfless mindset that permeates through the offense and the positionless nature of the players who make it go, it's not hard to see how life after Bernhardt has been nothing short of historic for the 2022 Maryland Terrapins.